So about this time last week, I was done with my first day at Gen Con. I was uh, pretty tuckered out from the dealer hall. I was probably eating dinner or maybe going back to walk around and see how things were going in the big main gaming hall. So Gen Con, it was, uh, it was big this year. Official numbers that came out just a little bit after the convention got done said that it was something like 62,000 people. That's, that's a lot of people, just in case you're wondering. 62,000 people in this one admittedly very large you know, building, but still. Um, yeah, that's a lot. There were a, it, it didn't seem so crazy busy right away Saturday morning in the dealer room like it did two years ago when I was there. Two years ago when I was there, I walked into the dealer room about 10.30 in the morning on Saturday morning, and I just turned around and walked right back out and I went to the mall because it was just shoulder to shoulder in there. This year, Saturday morning wasn't crazy. Sunday, on the other hand, was crazy go nuts because it was family day and so every other person is pushing a humongous stroller around with one to 26 children in it. And um, that makes things you know, a bit more difficult as it turns out. So yeah, um, it was a good time. Uh, there was a lot of stuff going on. I've got notes that I should probably pull out on my phone so I can make some sense of uh, what happened. All right, so right away on Wednesday, we get there. It's the day before the convention starts. I've had my ticket or my badge and my tickets and stuff done via will call. They didn't ship it to me. It was there for me to pick up in the will call line. The will call line, if you were following me on Periscope, was two to three hundred yards long. It took an hour to get through that line. It was crazy. Uh, I don't have any footage of it here, but it was nuts and it was kind of a pain. Um, I don't know what else they can do though when you have that many people. Next, well, next time if I go, I should probably just have it shipped to me, but they always say, you know, well, it's not guaranteed if it's, if it's shipped to you. Well, a lot of things, but okay. Anyway, so you have to make that decision about whether you're gonna do it will call or whether you're gonna have it shipped. And then the question is, am I gonna sit in line for an hour or more or am I just going to get it shipped to my house and see, you know, how the the cookie crumbles, I guess. Um, it's It was a very long line, but, you know, uh, at, the, at some point during that, in my heading to that line, I walked past a guy I hadn't seen in years and years, and he recognized me, but not initially. And I didn't see him because I wasn't looking the right direction. And then he was like, hey, that, and then he emailed me. And then later on, we got together. I'll tell you more about that in a little bit. So on Thursday... Dealer room, kind of pretty much first thing. You get yourself some breakfast after you get up and shower, and then you go to the dealer room. There was a humongous, humongous line. Not line, it was a mass. It was a, a, a blob of people who wanted to get into the dealer room, obviously. Uh, it got a little too much for my particular taste, so I kind of, uh, kind of, you know, left, not left the building, but I didn't hang out right in the front because I needed to rush in right when the doors opened. I kind of hung back a little bit and and uh, you know, saw how that all worked out. Um, no one was killed. Uh, no one was even maimed. So, you know, that's a bonus. But uh, yeah, it's a crazy, crazy amount of people who are there right away because there are a bunch of people who want to get there for specific convention exclusives and you got to get in line right away and that kind of stuff. Um, the lines were still just as long as they are any other time. Fantasy Flight Games booth, humongous, crazy line. Um, Privateer. Privateer had a, Privateer had an interesting system. Privateer Press in the past they've had this humongous line of people to get in to actually shop in their store. They don't just let you into the booth like you know commoners. You have to get in line to go into the booth at least early on the first couple of days. After a while they're just kind of letting everybody in pell mell. But uh, yeah, you could get a like a ticket that said come back at this time. And then you would come back at that time, and then you wouldn't have to stand in line and all. They would just let you into the booth. So that's kind of cool. It kind of helps spread things out a little bit. But um, yeah, I didn't stand in any of those lines. I have no interest in convention exclusives, frankly. Um, I did see a bunch of stuff from Mantic that was really cool. I stopped by that booth and looked at a bunch of things. They were running demos in their big, huge booth the entire weekend. Um, Ninja Division, they had two things that I found very interesting. They're generally making a lot of games with little chibi people, which are giant, you know, people with kind of cartoon humongous heads and tiny little bodies. I'm not super into that, frankly. 
but they are making uh, a Aliens vs. Predator game, which I saw the models for them and they looked pretty cool and I was kind of impressed by that. They also had a giant yellow robot. I'm not sure what it was for, but it was also kind of cool. Um, so I've got some video of that. So yeah, Ninja Division, Mantic, uh, who else did I see there? Hmm, let me look at my notes. Hairbrain Schemes. They are the guys who make Golem Arcana. I've talked about them several times before. They had a really big booth and they were running tons of Golem Arcana out of that booth. And there were people playing all weekend long. I got to meet Jordan Weissman, who is not only the guy who started Hairbrain Schemes, he also started uh, WizKids, invented Mage Knight and Hero Clicks and all that jazz. He started FASA, so um, Battletech, uh, Shadowrun. Um, he was there talking about a new game that they're going to be putting on Kickstarter in the fall, and it's going to be a PC, a new PC game of Battletech. And I got the feeling it wasn't going to be necessarily that I'm in a co you know I'm in the cockpit shooting. It's going to be more you know like the tabletop. I'm moving these guys over here, and I'm firing on this, and I'm doing that kind of stuff. I'm not. He didn't have anything to show. He was just basically there you know, shaking babies and, and kissing hands and saying, hey, this is what's coming out. We're going to be having this Kickstarter in the fall. So I'm interested in that. I did get to talk to him, like I said, and I thanked him for all the games that he's made that I've really enjoyed, including Crimson Skies, which was always a big favorite of mine. And he told me at the time, and this makes me smile still to this day, he told me, after I get done with Battletech, Crimson Skies is the next license I'm going to go back for. And I'm really looking forward to whatever he's going to do for that. Uh, Crimson Skies, the whole setting, when it was tabletop miniatures, when it was, you know, clicks game, when it was PC game, when it was even Xbox game, all those things. I ate up all that stuff because I really love that whole kind of world alternate history of Crimson Skies. If you've never heard of it, you should do a little bit of Google search and look it up because it's some amazingly cool stuff. I also stopped by the Weird booth um, and there was some cool stuff going on in the Weird booth. Uh, a lot of Malifaux, a lot of cool demos, a lot of big, there was a really couple of big demo kind of areas that they had built up with amazing stuff. That's the thing that's kind of cool about Malifaux is that you could pretty much put whatever kind of terrain you want in there because it's this sort of weird cross-dimensional whatever going on. So you could be like, oh, I'm going to put some Egyptian tomb looking stuff over here next to an old timey saloon. And it's totally fine because it's Malifaux. That's what's going on in that city. So uh, they did have some really cool stuff. I also stopped by our friends over at Megacon Games. Uh, recently known as Mercs games. They have now changed to Megacon games because they make more stuff than Mercs. They make Myth. They make uh, that spaceship game that I can never remember the name of, but looks got, it's got great artwork. Um, they're making... One of the things I was really interested in is they've got a new thing called Mercs Recon, and that's going to be like kind of a hybrid tabletop game board game where you've got tiles and little plastic miniatures and things like that. Kind of like, you know, the quintessential middle of the road kind of gateway game, uh, Space Hulk. But in this one, you are different mercs and you are fighting in uh, office buildings. So it's, you know, corp on corp action in office buildings and the tiles can be moved around to kind of change around the office buildings and stuff like that. That's supposed to be coming out soon. I talked to Keith, he said it should be, he's hoping it should be hitting stores before the end of 2015. They're running demos of that and I thought it was pretty cool. Gen Con's not just dealer area. The dealer area is humongous, humongous. I went through each day of the four days I was there, and I'm pretty sure I still missed some booths because, you know, it's not a grid. So there's times when you're walking on this way and then another booth gets in the way because it's humongous, and then you come on the other side and you've missed something, and I'm directionally challenged anyway. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure there were still some booths that I missed or only saw once, even though I went through that damn thing, uh, like I said, once a day for four days, at least once a day. Um, but there's also a ton of other gaming going on throughout the entire convention center. There's a humongous gaming room. It, 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 when I say humongous, I mean bigger than an American football field. Much bigger. Kind of an L-shape as well. And that is where you're going to have your... Uh, let's see here. Let me take a look at my list. Uh, God, there was so much going on in there. So there's a miniatures area. There's a board game area. There's a uh, card area. D&D area, all kinds of stuff. So, magic cards. Magic, still just as big as it's always been. They've got a big area in there. Tons of tournaments and things like that going on. Miniatures, tons of miniatures. Infinity had a huge showing this year. Really big. 
Uh, bolt action, getting bigger and bigger. There was this amazing board they had set up for bolt action that had like a castle and stuff like that. It's still really a place where you go to see a lot of home built stuff though too. Um, the Ottawa Red Shirts, look them up on Google. They still produce a lot of kind of home built stuff and run tons and tons of demos all, all week long. There was another group, I don't even know who they were. They, were, they had this humongous desert board and not like desert like actually out in the desert, but like a city in the desert and like a modern one, I don't know, Tel Aviv. I don't know if that's in the desert, I've never been there. Uh, Tehran, something like that. It was definitely Middle Eastern looking. And there was a zombie apocalypse going on, which reminds me a little bit of that movie, um, World War Z. So it could have been something like that. You had a bunch of players who were trying to get, I think, to an airplane to get out of there, and there was a bunch of zombies and cool buildings, and it looked amazing. Um, people put a lot of time and effort into some of these games. There was this amazing uh, Game of Thrones board game that somebody had blown up and made three-dimensional and made special parts for and pieces for, and it was humongous. That looked amazing. I... It, it, it's one of the few conventions where you see people who will bring stuff like that and really run interesting, cool stuff. There was also a really cool uh, Mordheim tournament going on there. They had lots of people playing and uh, you know a whole big uh, you know bunch of tables and stuff like that with cool stuff set up. That was really neat. There was, like I mentioned, the bolt action that was going on. Cool Mini or Not had a humongous area. They were running Dark Age, they were running Wrath of Kings, they were running Rum and Bones, which is their new kind of hybrid board slash minis game. That was really cool. Um, tons of stuff going on in that room. And then, of course, upstairs above that room was another entire room, huge, again, American football field size, that was just Pathfinder. Just the role-playing game Pathfinder. Pathfinder is humongous, if this is any kind of indicator. Far, far bigger uh, than um, Dungeons and Dragons is right now because Dungeons and Dragons had an area, a good sized area, but an area of the room downstairs and upstairs was a humongous room, probably more than a thousand people in it. They were all playing Pathfinder. So, uh, you know, if you're into RPGs, again, Gen Con has got a little bit of everything. One of the reasons that I prefer Adepticon is because I'm a miniature player and that's what this is about. But if you're into lots of different stuff, Gen Con's obviously the place to go. So now the important question, what did I bring back? That's, that's what we like to call the booty section of this particular uh, video. It, I, we'll see how this goes. This is the humongous bag that our friends at Cool Manier Not uh, gave you. If you buy like a thing like that big, they're like, oh, here's, here's your bag. And it's, it's seriously like you can't even, it barely fit in my car. Um, I'm going to put it on the floor. This is not working out for me here. All right, so things that I purchased. Let's talk about things that are not exactly game related. Okay, uh, well, this. You say, well, you bought a purse. Why would you do that? That's a stupid thing to do. Uh, it's not a purse. It is actually a Fez carrier from the people at Fezorama. And I bought this because I also bought a second Fez. I don't know, it's probably not in focus, probably cut off, but whatever. This is my Fez and I'm wearing it. And now I have this sweet case, uh, which I can carry two to three Fezes. And since I already own one, and now I own two, I'm just saying, I need a third Fez, I guess. But anyway, Fezorama, check them out online. I think they're awesome people. Let's see, what else? Um, so I gave myself kind of an ultimatum and I said, self, I'm not going to buy into any new miniatures games this year at Gen Con. I technically stuck to that, technically. What I did was I bought um, a new army for Dark Age. But I technically sort of already have some Dark Age stuff, so it's not like I bought a new game, it's just I bought a game that I bought once, maybe three, four years ago, and then never really built much of it. Uh, but so this is, yeah. So this is the core, and by the core, these are the robot guys. Um, they are great looking sculpts. These guys were not available when I originally got into uh, Dark Age and bought some stuff. I think I bought some Scarred and some Forsaken or else Outcasts. I can't remember which. But these guys are robots and uh, except they've gone crazy because their programming is corrupt and so they're not helping people anymore. They're out for blood, I assume. Actually organic materials because that's how they run. You should never build a robot that runs on meat. Just in case anyone's wondering, never build a robot that runs on meat. It's a pro tip. 
Um, this guy's a Pathfinder. He's really cool looking. This model come. This model has three different parts in it. It's metal, resin, and plastic, which I've never seen in a kit before. So that's kind of cool. Uh, I've got a bunch of blisters as well for them. This is a DRGY. I don't know what that is. Um, this was a, a con exclusive because I bought enough stuff. They threw in like a, a cool something or other. Um, let's see here. Got some more. I bought a lot of Dark Age. Let me see. What else did I get? Um, I got some paints. That's not what's in here though. Chessex makes these little tiny tokens. There's 200 tokens in here for four bucks. I got white. I got green. I got blue and red, I believe. And black. These are going to be very useful for playing a lot of games where you'll have to like remember, okay, that guy's on Overwatch and this guy's on doing this or whatever the deal is, and I'll be able to use those. So I'm looking forward to that. If I could just crinkle this near the microphone. I bet that would be super helpful for everybody. Uh, let's see here. I bought a couple more single figures for our friends over at Malifaux. I've got Hans and I've got Johan. Uh, they are both outcast members. And uh, I've already got a Johan painted, but he's the old metal one where he had a big gun and a pistol. And then when second edition came out, he no longer had the pistol anymore. So I've been using that guy as a proxy, but now I'm going to be able to use this guy. This guy's just got a sniper rifle and he's got cool glasses and he's awesome. I bought some paints, Vallejo, uh, well, Iowata technically had a booth, and they also sold, were selling Vallejo paints, and it was stuff that I just can't seem to find anywhere, including their new chipping medium, or chipping fluid, that I want to try it out. It's for, um, like, if you want to make something that look like the paint's chipped, you put this goop on. First you paint it, let's say, brown as rust, and then you put this goop on it in little spots on, like, along the edges, and then you... Uh, paint the base color over it, and then once you get that ready to go, you put a little wet you know, water on a toothpick, and then you can pick off the chipping fluid, and it will pick off the paint on top of the chi chipping fluid as well. It works out super well. Um, I bought these guys. These are from the Judge Dread miniature game. Cursed Earth Desperados. I don't know, there's like one, two, three, I don't know, like eight guys in here. It's like 15 bucks, and this was at the War Store. I also bought a couple other sets, some stuff from Wreckage, which is a kind of post-apocalyptic minigame. Those guys, again, I'm not getting into Judge Dredd and I'm not getting into Wreckage, but the miniatures are awesome for This Is Not A Test, which I've been talking a little bit about, I think, so far on my channel. And not maybe not on the channel, but on something I've been talking about it. I think I did show some stuff, at least on Instagram, which then goes on to Twitter and on to Facebook. Just a few more things. I walked past this booth uh, I don't know how many times during the convention. And there was a guy dressed as Cthulhu. I took a selfie with him. It might have actually been a Cthulhu, but I think it was technically a guy dressed as Cthulhu. I'm not sure. Anyway, they make these things. These are awesome. It's called Legends of Cthulhu, and it looks like an old-timey kind of 80s, like, you know, blister pack action figure. Uh, I had to get a Fishman. I mean, really, what else am I going to get? But I had to get the Fishman. Um, they have a cultist, a spawn of Cthulhu, a professor, and a deep one, aka Fishman. So I definitely had to get one of these. He's got a little spear, and he's awesome looking. Um, <laughs> look for the Legends of Cthulhu on YouTube, because they have a commercial that looks like it was made in the 80s and then like taped off of VHS or something like that. And then it's hysterical, and it's just it's made by this company called Warpo. And I'm really happy I got this. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it mint and keep it in the plastic. I think. Um, I also got from Games and Gears. This is a set of the Les Bursley brushes from Games and Gears. Um, this set is what they call a technical set. It's got two brushes for um, dry brushing, like a, a short one and a longer one. There's also um, know, let's see, detail dry brush. Oh, and then there's like a chisel brush, which is really great for edge lining. And then this, there's no more brushes in here. It's only the three brushes. They make another set, which is the exact same thing, plus one of those katana brushes that's got the little um, silicone tip. Uh, but I already have one of those, so I didn't need that. So it saved me like 15 bucks not buying that same brush again in this kit. So that was very nice of the Gears, gears and, and Games guys. Games and Gears? Games and Gears. I always get that confused. It's very nice of them to do that so that... You know, if you've already got this brush, there's no reason to buy it again, so they give you those options, which is great. One of the last things 
Um, I did not buy any t-shirts this year, but I did, besides this piece of garment, I did buy a patch. There was a company there that was selling um, gamer badges and they had a sash, so you could buy like a merit badge, kind of like you were in the Cub Scouts or whatever. But this one's, I guess, for miniatures because it's got a little army man on it. And it was three bucks, I'm gonna totally put it on my backpack or whatever and, uh, and do that stuff. So that's pretty much my booty. Um, again, uh, I had a good time. I got to meet with a friend of mine I haven't seen in probably 15 years. And uh, he, like I said before, we were walking on the hall, opposite directions, and he saw me, and he's like, why do I know that guy's face? And then he was like, hey, but by that point, I was gone. He emailed me, and since I've had the same email address since 1995, uh, it worked. And um, yeah, and so we got together Saturday night and you know, got back in touch and talked and then hooked up with some other guys and then went out for cocktails and then went back to the convention at like 2 in the morning and played Are You a Werewolf? That I don't even know how that happened exactly. It was crazy. I went to bed at quarter after four in the morning on Saturday. And then I got up at eight o'clock on Sunday morning. And then later in the day, I had to drive six and a half hours back to Wisconsin. So that was sort of tough as it turns out. I maybe didn't make the greatest of you know, plans there, but I really had a fun time talking to people. That's one of the best things about Gen Con is that there's the people, people you see only at Gen Con sometimes. So you meet up with them again and you're like, hey, that's great. And we get together and talk and people that you haven't seen in years. Um, I haven't decided if I'm going back again next year. Uh, Adepticon's always a, absolutely, I'm going back to Adepticon and I love Adepticon. Gen Con, housing's becoming super difficult. It's expensive. It's getting more and more crowded. In that press release that they put out, they mentioned that uh, the attendance has doubled since 2010. So in five years, they've doubled their attendance. That's not right. That's not normal. That's that's crazy town. Um, I don't know. It, it, we're we're going to have to see how it goes. But uh, yeah, it's it's it was a good time, and I enjoyed it. I'm glad I went. We'll see how things go for next year. Um, but now I got a lot more stuff to paint, so I should probably get at it. And uh, I'm looking forward to, to Dark Age. I'm looking forward to getting these other guys finished up and using them more for This Is Not A Test. I'll probably be talking about both of those games a little bit more as we go on through the rest of this year here on the thing. But uh, for right now, um, it's, it's pretty warm. And I'm going to go home and edit. And then, uh, But first, I'm going to take off this Fez because really, Fezes are best in the winter, in my opinion. This is, this is warm. It's keeping all the heat in on my head. So thanks for watching.